Hello and welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. The texting while driving bill has passed. Find out when the law will take effect. The state legislators have agreed on a budget. Find out which programs will be funded. Hello and welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. Drivers should be aware that the bill that would allow police to stop drivers for texting while driving is heading to the desk of Governor Ron DeSantis for approval. The Florida House voted 108 to 7 to send it to Governor DeSantis, who supports it. As of right now, texting while driving is currently illegal, but police cannot stop motorists for it. Once the governor signs the bill, it will take effect on January 1, 2020. Florida would join 43 other states that allow drivers to be ticketed for texting while driving. It's important to know drivers would be prohibited from typing on their phone while driving, except for situations where the driver has to call first responders. Drivers are prohibited from using their phones at all in school zones and work zones. Uh, I think this is good. This is good news. It's passed. I think it's been a long time coming. It's Put definitely some a teeth step. into the law. Right. It's definitely yeah. a step in the right direction. And the thing is, is if you have a law that they don't enforce very often, people mm. are like, eh, yep. I'm not going to exactly. get in trouble for it. I'm going to do it anyway. So. Yep, good news. So also in the Florida legislature, they've passed a $90 billion state budget. With the budget, $50 million will go to Visit Florida, the state's tourist and marketing agency. The Job Growth Fund will receive $40 million, and the Hurricane Michael Relief Fund will receive $85 million. The budget also includes about $682 million for environmental needs, such as an Everglades restoration and the protection of Florida's many freshwater springs, which was one of Governor Ron DeSantis's campaign promises. The budget also provides about 2% increase in funds that Florida's 67 school districts can use for a variety of purposes, including raises for teachers and school staff. Yay! According to State Representative Travis Cummings, the legislature has been very good to schools this session. Indeed, I know that the uh, teachers and, and school boards, school districts have been asking for more and they're finally going to get a little bit to work with. Yeah, so. And they're breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief mm -hmm. and it's, it's good that he's following through on his promises. Yeah, yep, so. our education is important. Well, for many years, firefighters in Polk County, as well as the state of Florida, have battled many fires, and in doing so, some have obtained cancer. Recently, the Florida legislature passed a bill to help firefighters who contract cancer. We spoke with Polk County's Public Information Officer, Chris John Keir, to learn more about what exactly this bill does for firefighters in Polk County. Thanks, guys. If this bill is passed and signed by the governor, it will provide firefighters and their families a little bit more peace of mind by providing things such as a $25,000 payout to help with co-pays, travel expenses, and overall medical fees. If you didn't know, firefighters are 14% more likely to contract cancer than the average person. Well, that's, that's good news. I know um, cancer is a very expensive disease and uh, the medicine alone for, for cancer patients can easily bankrupt somebody. So, right. And these people risk their lives every day for us and Absolutely. they need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you firefighters for all you do. In Polk County, you may have seen several areas where the forestry department is conducting controlled burns. These burns are done to help keep Polk County safe from uncontrolled wildfires that can be sparked by such things as a lightning strike. Polk County's Public Information Officer, Chris John Keir, spoke with a forestry representative to learn more about what homeowners can do to keep their homes safe from wildfires. Hi, I'm Chris John Keir from Polk County Fire Rescue. Today we're here with Todd Klanda from the Florida Forest Service to talk about wildfire and how to keep your residents safe. Yeah, the biggest thing is if the fire doesn't get to the house, the house won't burn. So there's a lot of things that homeowners can do as far as uh, raking pine needles away from their house. And, and leaves away from their home. Uh, taking a look at their bushes around their house, and if there's a lot of dead vegetation in those bushes, remove that dead vegetation. Uh, there's a lot of simple things that can be done, uh, such as watering your lawn. Uh, a lot of those small things make big difference. Now, on the house itself, is, are there things that, you know, sometimes leaves fall on top of the roof, they get in the gutters? What, what should residents do about that? Uh, yeah, they really need to take a look at their house from the top-down approach. Uh, they need to look at the roof to make sure that there's not a whole lot of leaf litter or uh, pine needles on the, on the structure itself. 
And if there is, just get up and brush those off. Um, look at the, if they have any gutters on the house. Make sure those gutters are cleaned out because those embers that happen from a wildfire tend to collect wherever the leaves and leaf litter uh, will collect on a house. I read something about uh, actual screening, like your porch screen or screens over your, your air vents. It, are, is that an important thing for the residents to know? It's, it's very important because if you keep, once again, if you keep those embers out of the house, the chances of the home igniting are, are just that much less. Uh, we recommend an eighth of an inch metal screen for any type of vent on the outside of the house. Um, and, and anywhere around that you, you have screening. Now, as far as uh, finding you know, the area, the residence itself, some of these houses, especially here in Polk County, are way back in the woods, way off the beaten path. What are some of the things residents really need to pay attention to do to prepare for that kind of stuff? Uh, right now, it, 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 you, you hit it right exactly. Um, if we don't know that they're there, then we don't know that it's out there. So if the fire's coming through, the only way we're going to know where your house is is if you have it clearly labeled uh, using uh, numerics on a, on a post that we can see. So to have your address number really visible from the closest entry point to the main to a main yes. highway is really important. Yes. On the mailbox, uh, large numbers, and, and that's the kind of thing you guys are going to be looking for when you're out yeah, there. Yeah, because we're going to know where the fire is because of the smoke, but we're not going to know where the residents are if they're not labeled. So knowing where those are at is going to make our job a lot easier because we're going to be able to go and defend those homes um, much faster. Well, Todd, I appreciate it. Thank you for everything Not you guys do, keeping us safe. Not a problem. All right, as always, very good tips from Polk County Fire Rescue. Mm -hmm. Things people can do to keep yep. themselves safe Absolutely. and their home safe. Especially this time of year, things are dry. I mean, we've had a little bit of rain here, but um, it's certainly the season that uh, things will catch on fire easily. Yes. Well, did you know that in Polk County there are five solar fields? Tampa Electric operates four out of the five solar fields. According to Bartow Electric Chief Brad Hires, the solar field in Bartow has resulted in lower power bills for their customers. Tico representative Cherie Jacobs said the Tico fields represent an investment of about $300 million. Tico serves about 85,000 customers in Polk County and provides power to other entities. Duke Energy, which serves Eastern Polk, does not have any solar fields in Polk County. Tico staff say they hire herds of sheep to maintain the grass on the farms. They have also designed better solar panels so that birds do not mistake the panels for water. Engineers also have designed fencing that keeps out foxes, raccoons, and coyotes and helps them to keep them from digging their way out into the fields. That's cute. They hire. Herds they, of sheep. They hire, I like that. And sheep they, for hire. And if you follow okay. them on Facebook, you can actually occasionally watch their live cam where you'll see the lamb cam. <laughs> so the sheep have had lambs this season, yeah. so you'll occasionally see them running by on the That's cameras. Fun. But I thought it was just ingenious to have them eat all the grass. I was like, yeah. that is too well, funny. Well, it's interesting how, like, as things develop, they find the areas that are problems and then the creative solutions to fixing those right. issues. It's like they're already working on being sustainable and finding additional ways to be yep. sustainable. The National Center for Disease Control and Prevention issued a travel alert for several countries that have major measles outbreaks. Polk County Health Department spokesperson Nicole Riley said that there are no cases reported in Polk County as of now or other central Florida counties. The health department is encouraging anyone with unvaccinated children to get their, vac their kids the measles vaccine at any of the county's five health clinics. The internet has been flooded with anti-vaccination propaganda, many of which claim that the vaccine is linked to autism. The Center for Disease Control discounts those claims and adds that the vaccine is safe and unrelated to other diseases or disorders. Some serious stuff. It is. Yep. I know they had to quarantine a cruise ship last week because of a measles outbreak, mm -hmm. and it's it's a big deal. And you've got to be really careful where you get your information from. Go to go to the source. Go to the scientists, the doctors that know what they're talking about. They'll, they'll steer research. you straight. It's always important to do mm -hmm. your research. The city of Lakeland has welcomed a new swan signet to the family. The city has a male and female black neck swan, and recently one of their eggs hatched. Steve Platt, grounds maintenance supervisor for the City of Lakeland Parks and Recreation Department, 
and his crew are the keepers of the swans around Lake Morton. They noticed the black neck swans making a nest as soon after the female produced three eggs. The crew monitored the nest diligently and took the eggs to the city's special swan egg incubator located at Companion Animal Hospital. Swan eggs are incubated at a temperature of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity of about 60 percent. The eggs are typically turned slightly every four hours until a few days before the eggs hatch. This baby swan is still being taken care of oh. at the nursery until it's ready to live on its own. Fur ball. Oh, Look he up. is so cute. <laughs> I am following this story because anything about baby animals gets me. But That's I thought great. it was funny that in the story they actually pointed out that his parents aren't the best parents in the planet, so <laughs> they actually had to take the egg and get foster, it to hatch. Foster so. family. All right. Well, <clears throat> have you been to Walmart lately? That's right. Don't be surprised if during your next visit to the superstore, you see a robot. If you cross paths with the robot, do not be alarmed. He is there for one job and one job only to clean the floors. This robot's name is Auto C. It is an autonomous robotic floor scrubber that travels through open areas of the store, leaving clean and polished floors behind. Mark Gammon, a manager at the Winter Haven Walmart store, said Auto C has sensors that create a six inch buffer that signals the machine to stop if it encounters an obstacle, such as a package or customer. At the end of the fiscal year, stores in Winter Haven, Mulberry, and Lake Wales will get the autonomous robotic floor scrubber Auto C. That's too cool. That is pretty cool. I want one in my own house. <laughs> I don't think it would fit, but and my dogs wouldn't be very happy with me. Yeah, you just go with the uh, little, what are they? Roomba. Roomba. I think there's another Roomba. version of yeah, it now that can do wet floors. Yeah, but we're not here to advertise, so. <laughs> no, definitely not. The Early Learning Coalition of Polk County is offering a free program for first-time expectant mothers in need of guidance and reassurance to cope with their new arrival. This program is available to mothers who meet income requirements and are no more than 28 weeks into the pregnancy. Enrollees receive home visits from a nurse who monitors their pregnancy and continues contact until the child reaches the age of two. Moms will learn how to cope with such things as lack of sleep, time management, and adjustment of a parent's relationship with other family members. They also gain referrals for health care, child care, job training, and other support services. For more information, call 863-519-8550 or email nfpinfo at elcpolk.org. I think this is a great idea. There's a couple programs that mirror this one and they really are important um, because they say that most abuse occurs because of the transition and just the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So this is really helping the moms and the babies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And not to mention for those who, you know, the, the lowering the stress level of the mother helps helps the babies. And, you know, helps everybody. Yep, I, absolutely. Parenting is stressful. <laughs> well, the city of Winter Haven is looking for people interested in digital technology to serve on its Smart City Advisory Committee. The committee will be tasked with exploring smart city opportunities, strategies, and partnerships, both internal and external, to recommend innovative smart city developments for the city of Winter Haven. Anyone interested in serving should complete an application with the city clerk, Vanessa Castillo, at 863-291-5600 or vcastillo at mywinterhaven.com. It's amazing how much technology has progressed and it's yeah. awesome that these municipalities are looking to keep up with technology. Yeah, absolutely. You see it a lot in, in a lot of the bigger cities implementing the smart technology, but it's cool that Winter Haven's going to make the step to really it's pretty push forward city. with it's it. It's getting bigger. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> it's now time for sports and since Neil Duncan is not here, Tina and I have got you covered. The Florida Southern women's golf team is ranked 13th in the April 26 Women's Golf Coaches Association National Poll. The Moccasins wrapped up the regular season in April at the Argonaut Invitational, where they finished third. The Mocs received an at-large bid to the NCAA South Region Tournament, which will be played at the Cleveland Country Club in Cleveland, Tennessee from May 6th. To eighth. Congratulations. Well, that wraps up the show for today. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to tune in again next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time.